with Parasite receiving so much praise in Korea right now and recently actually winning the best film prize at Cannes in France I figured it would be cool to look at my favorite 10 movies in Korea about two years ago I heard that I would be going to Korea so as to prepare I watched some Korean movies figured maybe I'd learn something to get the feel of the culture you know turns out Korean movies are really fucking good and everyone should see them this list only contains Korean movies made in Korea in the 21st century and it's not going to have movies like Stoker and Snowpiercer which are both great movies uh, with Korean directors but they weren't made in Korea they have very little Korean actors and they probably wouldn't have made the list anyways but you know just to say just so you know I guess just so you know Let's first look at some movies that didn't make the cut. Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance. Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance is a ridiculously good Park Chan Wook movie, which is technically part of the revenge trilogy that doesn't really exist, and some people think it exists, but it doesn't really exist. I wouldn't get too hung up about that, it doesn't really matter. Um, all that you need to know is that he's my favorite director, he's perfect in every single way. If it was perfect, it would be on the list, it's not, so. It's not perfect, but it's brutal, it has great performances, it's Park Chan-wook. You should probably watch it after you've seen the other 10 movies on this list. Another one is The Attorney. It's a very basic attorney story and it's made so much better by the actor Song Kang-ho. He'll be on this list a lot because he's a great actor and he knows what he's doing. Another one is The Host, it's a monster movie made by Bong Joon-ho who also made the movie Parasite that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, it's a monster movie that actually gets the characters right instead of the monster. The monster has never been the most important part of a movie, for me at least. Let's look at the most recent Godzilla. They got the monster very right, the monster was great. The characters were terrible. Some people don't care about that, I do care about that. I've, I enjoyed Godzilla, I guess, it wasn't a good movie. The host has a great monster with shaky CGI but it's 2006 so you know you can't expect too much and most importantly the characters work, they're fun, they're interesting and they just work. This movie also stars Song Kang Ho who I mentioned earlier and it's just so good, he's just, he's just great, the whole cast is great, everyone's great in this movie and this is honestly a great movie to get in, into easily if you want to. Another one on the list is Sunset in my hometown. This won't be on any other list you'll see anywhere and therefore it didn't make my list either but it was my favorite movie that I watched in Korea itself. See that Busan Film Festival. It has a lot of heart. It's a fun story about it about a rapper who wants to be famous and it's just fun. It's just a fun movie. It doesn't really deserve to be on this list but I really like it. There's honestly so many more movies that I could mention like The Man From Nowhere which is basically John Wick in Korea. I Saw The Devil, Mother and The Brotherhood of War is a great one as well. Um, there's a lot of great movies that I haven't seen yet as well. Number 10. We start with Bong Joon-ho. Bong Joon-ho. I, I, I don't know if it's Bong Joon-ho or Bong Joon-ho. I should know this. I was in Korea for a while. I think it's Ho. I think it's Bong, Bong Joon-ho. Bong Joon-ho. Something like that. I don't know. I'm not sure. But we start this list with his movie, Memories of Murder. It's based on a true incident that happened in a Korean town from 1986 to 1991, in which 10 women were found raped and murdered. And the whole story is about trying to find out who did it. It's a very similar movie to David Fincher's Zodiac. If you've seen Zodiac and you like that, then you will love this movie. I would say it's a better version of that movie in every single way. If you don't really watch foreign movies, then it's going to be harder to get into, but once you get into it, you will, you will enjoy it a lot. You will enjoy it a lot. It's a very dark movie, but it features perfect cinematography, perfect performances all around, and great directing by Bong Joon-ho, uh, who I mentioned earlier as the director of The Host and Parasite. He's probably one of the best directors currently still working. I really enjoy his movies. He's on par with the David Finchers of this world, who's one of my other favorite directors. I recommend if you haven't seen his movies uh, yet, you really should. For some reason, this is the only movie from him that I have on this list. There's a lot of movies that could have been on it. I've heard other ones over it to get some diversity in the list.
Number 9 is one of many Park Chan Wook films on the list. It's Lady Vengeance. He's my favorite director. He knows how to evoke emotions perfectly. He knows how to set a scene. He knows. It's such a unique style that you can't really pinpoint, but if you would turn on the TV and you saw a Park Chan Wook movie and you would have seen one before, you would instantly know it's a Park Chan Wook movie because it's just so. He just has a unique style that no other director has that shines through it in every single way in music, in directing, even in the script. It really shows that it's one of his movies. He has a sense of timing that is honestly impeccable. He knows when to make a joke, when not to make a joke. He is the best director around for me. Watch all of his movies, really. Just watch all of them. They're all great. He's, he's gonna be on this list four times, so. You know, it's good. In very broad terms, this movie is about a woman that gets put in jail for killing a six-year-old boy. She's in jail for 13 years and when she gets out, she's out to get the guy who actually did it and she's out for revenge. So just like Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, this movie is about revenge. It's a very stylistic movie and when I first watched the movie, I wasn't sure what was actually going on. I was very confused at times. It took me a second watch to really appreciate the movie for what it is. I would usually detract points for something like that. feel like you should be able to understand the movie the first time you see it. Maybe I'm just stupid and I think I wasn't paying attention right because the second time I saw it, it was very obvious what was going on in a good way, not in a bad way. It's a bit of a confusing movie. Especially because of the timelines at the start, it gets a little shaky and weird. And you're not sure when what is happening, but once you figure it out, it's such a good movie. The main actress is great, the score of the movie is great. It's, it's a lot of classical music, a lot of Vivaldi, I think. And yeah, this is the perfect movie to rewatch. If you have seen this before, you should probably rewatch it. Maybe if you didn't like it the first time, you will love it the second time. I certainly did. It's part of the Revenge trilogy. I don't really care about the trilogy, you don't have to see it in any particular order. They're all great movies, uh, two of them are on this list obviously and the other one was in the honorable mentions so obviously they're all great movies. We still have one of the three coming up. Uh, I, would, I would watch that one last because that one is the best one and if you would watch that one first then you would have different expectations for this movie which probably would ruin this movie a little bit. It did for me but yeah I would probably just just watch the movie. Just watch this movie, it's great. There's a, there's a female protagonist, she's strong, she's great, she's cool. Um, I know some people care about that. I cared about that, I thought it was really cool. 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 I thought it was really Omini Number 8 is My Sassy Girl, a movie that really is different from the rest of the movies in this list, mostly because it's a rom-com. I wouldn't say I hate romantic comedies, but I generally don't like them, but this was an exception, a very, very nice exception. And honestly, it's a very fucking good romantic comedy. It's just great. It's a great movie. The movie is based on a true story. It's basically just a love story between two students. It's quirky, it's weird, it's over the top. Some people would probably call it a toxic relationship these days. Yeah, maybe. Maybe if you watch the movie, you'll, you'll get what I mean. But it's great. It's cute, it's great. I had a smile on my face the whole movie and honestly, it's just one of those movies that you watch and you smile and it's cute to watch with your girlfriend. It's just a cute and adorable movie that everyone should see at one point. It's very Korean, which is a whole thing that I haven't really touched on this video. Koreans have a very interesting style of humor. Some people like it, some people don't. It's very different from Dutch humor, it's very different from American humor and it's just a very different kind of humor and not everyone likes that. Some jokes will fly over your head, you won't understand them, maybe it will seem too exaggerated, too weird, too quirky. All of that is very Korean, I kinda like it, I think it's fun. It's not in every movie, there's a reason why I mention it in this movie because it's more heavy handed than in other movies. But this is honestly the standard for Korean movies in general. 
But if you're looking for a more lighthearted Korean movie, then this is definitely the one for you. And I would definitely recommend it to anyone, especially if you're watching it with a girlfriend or a boyfriend. I would definitely watch this one, it's very cute. You call the wrong number or the dial is not in service. Please call again. Next movie on this list is another Song Kang Ho starring movie. It is the movie A Taxi Driver. It came out in 2017. It's a great movie and it's probably the movie that I would recommend to my friends that don't watch Korean movies the fastest. I would probably recommend this movie first. Instead of all the other movies, there might be better movies on this list, I would recommend this one. It's very, very accessible. True story about a sole taxi driver who gets tasked with bringing a foreigner to Gwangju in the year 1980. What he doesn't know is that there's riots going on in Gwangju to overthrow a corrupt government. And he doesn't know this, he takes the job and what he doesn't realize either is that he is with a German reporter who is there to report on those riots. Uh, he doesn't realize which dangers he is going to encounter and it makes for a crazy, crazy story. It's a crazy movie, it's a true story. If you're interested in history at all, in riots at all, in people standing up against higher powers, then this is the movie for you. It's so good. Son Kang Ho delivers another perfect performance, but the real props go to the director, Jang Hoon, who really shines in this movie. It's a movie of two hours, but it flies by, it's done in seconds, it feels like you're so engrossed in a movie, it goes by so quickly, and in the two hours you get to cry, you get to laugh, you get to scream at your TV in frustration about what's happening in the movie right now. And you get to be so fucking tense that you wish the scene would be done already, but it's kind of great as well and you kind of want to keep watching the movie, but it's also really tense. And damn, it's good. It's just so good. It's just great. It's honestly perfect in a way. It's um, There's some beautiful cinematography in there. The comedy is brilliant and very accessible also to a Western audience. Somehow it doesn't take away from the incredibly sad subject at hand because it really delivers on the emotions as well. And honestly, it's, it's just pretty much flawless. The only reason this isn't as high as the other movies, because I think the other movies on this list were more original than this one. But that doesn't mean that this one wasn't basically flawless at what it did. It mixed a serious subject and comedy perfectly. I think it's worth a watch for everyone. Um, this is definitely the movie that I would recommend you to watch if you want to watch any movie at all. Uh, this is just a movie that I would recommend to anyone, even if it's just not a Korean movie, I would just recommend this one, it's just great, just watch it. And this is fucking number 7 on the, on the list, um, the rest is gonna be even better, so fucking prepare, prepare, prepare for the best, the best, the best. You call your first time? That's my second time. Guangzhou, we go fast. Oh, good kid, prepare. Guangzhou, don't worry, don't worry, I'm best the driver. Guangzhou, don't worry. Next is a movie that I initially dismissed because of the poster and the trailer, both which were terrible. And didn't draw me in at all, it looked stupid, it looked like it was made on a budget of like five dollars and I was like, who made this poster? It looks like I could have made that, I could have literally made that, I could have made it in like five seconds um, and I could have probably made it better in five seconds. Sorry whoever made that, but it's terrible, it's just terrible, Jesus. Castaway on the Moon is actually a perfect comedic getaway to just not think about your life for 90 minutes and just look. You know, it's a fucking river, you know, you could just swim, but he can't swim, so... He's stuck on this island, in the middle of a river, still in the middle of the city basically, but it's on a river, the river is 
wide enough that no one can really see him uh, or so everyone thinks nobody's gonna miss him because he has no one in his life anymore in a true castaway situation he decides to live and that he wants to get off this island at one point and a lot of funny antics and shoe the movie honestly just has a lot of heart it's fun you're just smiling throughout the whole movie Jung Jae Young has great comedic delivery and carries the movie for me it's honestly just it's honestly just a big light-hearted movie that works maybe we want to eat noodles you'll get what it means when you watch the movie it's a great movie just watch it Number 5 is my favorite zombie movie of all time, Train to Busan. What makes this movie so special isn't that it's a zombie movie, even though that's probably why it's higher up on my list and probably should be. Uh, it has some flaws, it's not perfect like some of the other movies on this list, but it's so fun. It's two hours of constant madness, um, the fast zombies, so there's not a single moment that you feel like you're safe. Obviously there's stupid characters, but the stupid characters in every movie. The cast is unique, at times cartoonishly so, um, but it really works. The fact that guns aren't everywhere is a big plus for me as well. It makes everything more tense and fun and you get to be a little bit more creative with the scenes and you get to be a little bit more exciting in general. They're just on a train and there's zombies in the train and it's great and it's fun. And the whole movie doesn't have dull moments and the movie keeps you on the edge of your seat throughout. The emotional aspects of the movie really deliver, the actors really deliver and it's zombies on a fucking train, what more do you want really? Three Park Chan Wook movies in the next four on this list is JSA or Joint Security Area. The movie deals with, as the title already says, the Joint Security Area, the DMZ, the, the Demilitarized Zone in Korea. Basically, the border between South and North Korea. As many of you know, this is still a thing today. It's still a big big thing today. The fact that this movie could have really happened is what makes it so interesting. The movie is about how two North Korean soldiers have been killed in a DMZ, the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea, and supposedly by a South Korean soldier. So an investigation team made up from Swiss and Swedish experts is sent out to investigate the incident. The story isn't real, but the place is, the politics are, the tension is. In many ways, this exact scenario could have actually happened, and that in itself makes it worth watching. The brotherhood between the characters in the movie is perfectly done, the tension is perfectly done, the twists are perfectly done, and the eventual reveal of what went down is incredibly emotional. I'd recommend this movie to anyone really, it's uh, very easily accessible, it's, all in all it's still a very exciting movie to watch either way, you don't have to enjoy history that much to like the movie, it's just very good. Entering in at number 3 is another Park Chan-wook movie because what the fuck, he's a great fucking director. The movie is called The Handmaiden and it's a 2016 movie which sets itself in the 1930s of Korea. It's a film that should have undoubtedly won an Oscar but didn't because of politics, which is an interesting subject that I might get into in a 
in the next video if someone is interested it should have literally won foreign film but it wasn't even nominated for foreign film because korea entered another movie um, because of politics basically so as i said the movie takes place in 1930s korea when korea was occupied by japan and regards a young woman who gets hired as a handmaiden to a Japanese heiress. It's much more to this story, but honestly, I feel like explaining it further would give it away too much. Um, I wouldn't blindly go into this movie and just watch it. It's Gone Girl on steroids. The cinematography is some of the best I've ever seen. The custom design and the general design is some of the best I've ever seen. The twists are some of the best I've ever seen. And the movie is one of the best I've ever seen. Lead actress Kim Tyree is a rising star, as can also be seen in Mr. Sunshine. And the rest of the cast is honestly equally great. For all accounts, it is a erotic trailer. So I probably wouldn't watch this with your mom, but you really do have to see it. The thing that held me back from watching it forever was the time period. I'm not much of a costume drama fan myself. If you're the same way, please don't let that stop you because this is one of the best movies I have ever seen I think costume dramas are often very boring this is not one of those this is not boring it's perfect and honestly I have a little bit of a crush on Kim Tyree after this movie but that kind of makes sense if you see the movie so this movie is a must watch think of Gone Girl in the 1930s but better and with even more charming leads um, I said even more even though the leads in Gone Girl aren't very charming um, but yeah, just watch it. Burning is a masterpiece. It is perfect. It's great. It is amazing. It's beautiful. It's and it's generally the best movie of 2018 for sure. Remember everyone's favorite Walking Dead character, Glenn. Spoilers. He's the guy who got his head bashed in. It's great, great moment that I really liked a lot. I really didn't. I hated it. Turns out he's actually a brilliant actor and. You really should really look out for him from now on. He does subtle acting so well that at times I forget that he's acting. I was just blown away by, by his subtle acting at times. Which is crazy when you realize that usually subtle acting is something that you shouldn't notice or wouldn't notice. Because it's subtle. But somehow in this case, in this movie, it is something that really stands out. The movie is about a delivery man who is out of a job and then runs into an old acquaintance from his old neighborhood, a girl. They click quicker than you would realistically do and before he knows it, she's going to Africa and she asks her to look after her cat. When she comes back, she is accompanied by Ben, played by Steven Yun. Ben seems off to him, but is that just his jealousy speaking or is there more at play here? The movie was made by Lee Chang Dong, who also directed Poetry and Oasis, two movies I haven't seen yet, but from what I've heard they could break into this list once I've seen them anyways. They're supposedly very good. But Lee Chang Dong really knows how to place doubt into your mind. Who is right? Who is wrong? Wait, what did that mean? Did that have any significance? I don't know. Does it have any significance? I still don't know. Honestly, I saw this movie a few months ago and I'm still thinking about it because I don't know the answer to every single question that I just asked. It is one of those movies that is art. It's an art movie. And not everyone is gonna like it. It's gonna be a little slow for some people. It's gonna be a little artistic for some people. Maybe people will even call it pretentious. If you like movies as an art form, this is the movie for you and you will love this movie. And I hope I'm not overhyping it too much, but I don't think that's possible because this is artistically one of the best movies I've ever seen. And it's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful movie in every single way. It looks beautiful and the whole story is just perfectly made it's really just incredible what they did with this movie it starts out a little slow but my god is it worth it
Number one, it's old boy. Who would have guessed? I think everyone would have guessed. I really didn't want to put it at number one, mostly because it's the obvious choice. And it makes me seem like I don't know what I'm talking about because it's old boy and everyone chooses old boy. It is Park Chan Wooks, man. The internet actually agrees with me on this one. On IMDb, it is number 67 on the best rated movies of all time. This movie deals with action, revenge, tension, emotion so well that no other movie really compares. And basically popularized the one-shot hallway fighting scene that we know and love these days. The punches felt weighted, it felt real, everything felt like it hurt. Like it hurt me personally. By the end of it, you would be just as tired as them. Old Boy is a perfect movie, it's crazy, it's weird, it's all over the place. But by the end of it, it will all make sense and you will just be left in an awe as the credits start rolling. Choi Min Sik is a brilliant actor who portrays the despair the character is going through perfectly and this despair is only strengthened by the great score based upon classical musical once again, mostly Vivaldi. Old Boy really isn't for everyone. Even though it's the first Korean movie I saw, it probably shouldn't be the first Korean movie you see. It's brutal, it's gruesome and for some people it might honestly be too much. But generally it is a masterpiece and everyone should see this at one point in their lives. I don't want to be an elitist, but don't watch the American version first because it's pretty bad in comparison. It's not a bad movie, but they removed so much of the charm of the original, so much of the plot points that were so important in the original movie, they just completely changed them. And it doesn't make it half as good. It's just not as good. Don't watch it. This is a movie that relies on certain plot points that can get spoiled for you. Don't let them get spoiled for you, watch the movie before that and you will be so much better off and you will love this movie so much more. This is my top 10 for this moment, um, it might literally change next week when I watch one of the other tens if not hundreds of movies that are critically acclaimed from Korea that I haven't watched yet. Let me know if you want me to see a certain Korean movie, I'd definitely be open to suggestions so let me know in the com comment section below, let me know on Twitter maybe, my Twitter handle is in my description somewhere below and if you want to see me talk about other Korean movies, maybe even a K-drama if we're getting crazy. Um, then uh, subscribe, maybe. Do that. Thanks. <laughs>